when I was traveling through Australia, back to Sydney from Cairns, me and some friends stopped off at Byron Bay. For people that aren't familiar with this place, it's a very small coastal town, and it's pretty much loved by anybody who goes there, and it attracts around 2 million people per year. It's also the home of the famous actor Chris Hemsworth. It's a fairly upper class and kind of hippie-ish place, but it's incredibly scenic and very beautiful. When I was there, I remembered someone telling me about someone who mysteriously vanished, and that that person was staying in the same hostel that we were. And of course, running a creepy YouTube channel, it led me to do a few Google searches that night. And as it turns out, there are a few people who have vanished without a trace there. But why is that? Why in such a small holiday destination? Well, after speaking to a few locals, the reason could be quite sinister. Let me delve in. The case that I had heard about was the disappearance of Theo Hayes. Theo was an 18 year old Belgian backpacker. He was last sighted leaving Cheeky Monkeys, a bar in Byron Bay. He was seen leaving at approximately 11 pm on the 31st of May 2019, and that's the last time he was ever seen. He was on a holiday working visa and was due to be flying home in a week's time. His parents had tried to contact him, but after he didn't get back to them for a couple of days, they naturally became concerned. So they called the New South Wales Police to see if anybody could help. Theo was staying at the Wake Up Hostel, and just as his parents called the police, the hostel had called them too. As Theo hadn't checked out in the last three days, and his passport and clothes were still in his room. The Australian police conducted searches, along with helicopters, drones, dogs, trackers, divers, volunteers, and rock climbers. But they turned up absolutely nothing. The police did however find a Puma hat, and it looked similar to what Theo was wearing when he vanished. The police also managed to track his final phone signal, and they tracked them to Cape Byron. The police theorised that Theo went for a walk and fell from the cliffs near the famous Byron lighthouse, but the police would soon uncover so much more. And like I said, Theo isn't the only person who has gone missing over the years. I'll come back to Theo's case soon with some more information, but first, I'll just show you some more people who have gone missing over the years. Theo is part of a list of 2,600 people who have been missing for longer than three months in Australia. Six of those on that list vanished within just a few kilometers from Byron Bay, and their strange disappearances remain unsolved. Ellen Wilson was last seen on CCTV taking money out of an ATM on the 11th of September 2015. The CCTV footage was near Byron Bay. The next morning she phoned a friend and agreed to meet to do some volunteer work later that day. But Mrs Wilson didn't turn up, and her friend became worried and called the police to report her missing. All of her relatives have stated she wouldn't just leave like this, and she has not been heard from since. Malcolm Briggs was last seen in Mullah Mumbai, a small town inland from Byron Bay, in 1975. He did however keep in contact with his extended family until 2004, but they haven't heard from him since. The family reported him missing, but he has never been found. Jeffrey Neville was last seen in the same place of Mullah Mumbai, around December 1993. He needs specific medication to stay healthy and alive, but he has not made a pickup of his medication since, and he has not made contact with his family or friends to this day. Rodney Clement Bradridge was 23 years old when he was dropped off on Fraser Road in Mullah Mumbai on the 22nd of May 1997. He has not been seen or made any contact with friends or family since. 
Margaret Ryan, was last seen by a friend just outside of Byron Bay on the afternoon of the 3rd of July, 1986. She was 38 when she went missing and has not made any contact with her friends or family since. Bronwyn Winfield was last seen at her home in Lennox Head, which is just south of Byron Bay. She was last seen on the 27th of May, 1993, by her relatives. She has made no contact with her family since that date, and there are serious concerns for her well-being, since the 2002 investigation has led experts to believe she may have been killed. Her case remains unsolved. But these aren't the only strange events to take place in this small seaside town and its surrounding areas. As me and my friends were leaving Byron Bay, a radio news story came on, which spoke of a missing woman. They announced that her body had been found. Her name was Tia Littles, and she was found on the 14th of July, 2020, at a makeshift campsite during a two long day search of the bushlands in Byron Bay. She was reported missing by her family in January 2020. She had last been seen just near Byron Bay in October of last year. Once I returned back to Sydney, I got talking to a good friend of mine late at night, and he lived in Byron Bay for a number of years, and he had seen Theo around before he went missing. We began to talk about Theo, and he told me something that gave me serious chills. It turns out that Byron Bay is not only home to Hollywood movie stars, but also home to some strange cults. My friend continued to tell me that hidden away in the Byron Bay hinterlands, there are many spiritual cult-like retreats, promising a discovery of one's true self and a return to a simpler life. And this cult often preys on people who are vulnerable. One woman who went into the bushlands to discover herself said that the cult held meditation sessions where people would scream and cry for tens of minutes at a time. The cult also encouraged giving up technology like their smartphones and also encouraged them to cut off communication with the outside world, which is classic cult behaviour. The woman in question did however get out after a year, but some people aren't always that lucky. One that stood out to me was Marion Barter. She disappeared in 1997 at the age of 51. She travelled to the UK for a year-long holiday after selling her house, in which she lost $15,000 by selling it cheap, which shows she was desperate to sell the property as quickly as possible. It was only on the market for three weeks. Anyways, Marion flew to the United Kingdom on the 23rd of June, and she sent postcards to relatives and her daughter Sally, and she did so for the next couple of months, but on the 1st of August 1997, Marion called her daughter Sally, but this was the last time she would ever have contact with her mother. The postcard stopped, the letters stopped, and she stopped making phone calls. Sally became concerned for her mother's well-being and contacted the Australian bank, Commonwealth Bank, and explains to them that her mother is in the UK, but nobody can contact her. Sally told them that she needed to see if her mother had made any recent transactions. Sally is then told the news that there has indeed been activity in her account. $5,000 had been withdrawn in Byron Bay in Australia, and this would continue for the next three and a half weeks. Sally then takes a photo of her mother to the Byron Bay police station and reports her missing. But later in October of 1997, Sally receives a phone call from the Byron Bay police and is told that her mother has been located, but she doesn't wish for anyone to know her location or activities. In the following years, Sally tirelessly searched for her mother with the help of the Salvation Army Family Tracing Service, 
the Australian missing persons teams and national TV medias too to help her find some answers but no answers were found recently a credible tip has been received which has prompted an investigation into the group Hermes Far Eastern Shining a cult known as the Water People the whole case is an extremely strange rabbit hole but there are so many similar stories like this which is strange as Byron Bay only has a population of around 32,000 but just by googling Byron Bay cults it will bring up plenty of information about them so let's get back to Theo the Belgian backpacker could a cult really be responsible for his disappearance well we already know that people can vanish despite efforts to find that person in question and the people I have spoken to seem to think this is a plausible explanation and even Theo's dad agrees that this theory could be true he was interviewed on a Belgian radio station in which he said he believes his son could be alive but trapped in one of the region's cults or communes unable to communicate with the outside world now let me share with you exactly what we know about Theo's disappearance what we know so far is from multiple sources is that he was not drunk when he left the Mad Monkey's bar it should be known though that this place did have a reputation for spiking a few years back Theo was escorted out by security staff at 11 p.m they said that he was friendly and polite but he seemed a little uneasy on his feet but he hadn't drank too much according to people who were with him he had two drinks and he wasn't aggressive or causing any issues it is assumed that Theo walked back to the backpackers hostel and that something happened to him on his way back Byron is a very small place and the hostel was an easy walk from town but after obtaining Theo's Google records it's determined that Theo didn't go back to the hostel that night and he didn't even attempt to CCTV footage shows him walking off into the night at 11pm and we know that he messaged some friends and sent a WhatsApp message to his stepsister at around 1am we also know that he used Google Maps to get back to the backpacker hostel but despite using this app he walked in the opposite direction from the hostel and as you can see from the map on the screen the route that Theo took makes absolutely no sense the hostel is at the top left corner of the map and would take approximately 20 minutes to get there Byron Bay Lighthouse is at the top right hand side corner of the map and that journey would take well over an hour to get there the area that Theo walked was incredibly dark and it's not part of the usual touristy spots the Google data also suggested that Theo was walking quickly and here's the part I found rather disturbing for whatever reason Theo decided to go through the Milne track but he didn't take the usual pathway he opted for a strange route through the thick bushland part which would have been quite a challenge which would be impossible without knowing the area and we know he was only in Byron Bay for a couple of days so he can't have been too familiar with his surroundings and especially not at night time but he did in fact manage to make it to the beach while walking through the thick bushland Theo kept up an unusually fast pace Theo did stop for around five minutes in a spot that was hidden by vines this piece of information has some people speculating that Theo could have been hiding from somebody that night but he then quickly moved on again keeping up the same pace as he did before and at night in this place it's pitch black and you literally can't see a thing but Theo did manage to make it through the bushland and he made it to the beach and around this location 
there are many illegal campsites in the dunes nearby, and it shows that Theo made his way along the sand to the cozy corner, which is at the north end of Tallow Beach, to the cliff that is underneath the famous Byron Bay Lighthouse, and that's when his GPS signal shut off. His phone connected to Cape Byron cell tower at 1.42pm the following day, which was the last time it was connected, and that's where the case goes cold. So what happened? Was he spiked, and in a state of delusion, ran over the cliff edges? Or was he chased by someone, and that's why he walked fast? Perhaps. But how could he have known the route so well, especially the part when he walked through the mill track, through the thick bushlands, a route that was unknown to people who didn't live there? Or did he meet someone? Someone who convinced him to join a cult or a commune with a promise of a better, more fulfilling life. Being a backpacker in Australia myself, I know how social the lifestyle is. You can easily meet someone, and Byron is a very social place. But what if the person he potentially met that night knew exactly where they were taking him? A secluded place nobody knew about. What if they told him that they knew a place that you have to see before you leave town? And they lured him to his death. I think this could make sense too, since he had the directions back to the hostel open on his phone the entire time while he was walking. Maybe this was just in case something did go bad, with the person he could have potentially met, and he had to get away quickly and find his way back to the hostel. But then again, why is there no trace of him? The whole thing is such a mystery, with so many possibilities. And what of the other people who have gone missing over the years? Could these strange cults be responsible? Could they be keeping people against their will? Or perhaps they have brainwashed them into staying? As I'm so close to Byron Bay, I think me and a few friends are going to travel up there and see what's happening with these strange retreats. But if you do have any information, I'll leave the relevant contact information in the description. It's likely that someone out there knows something, or knows what happened to Theo. I'll finish up with Theo's father's plea for anyone to come forward with information, but it is quite upsetting to see. When I left Belgium, I promise, Theo's little brother, Lucas, that I would bring his brother home. Please, help me keep my promise to him. <laughs>